Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the AOPEN Tech Playbook. My name is Miles Schofield. I'm a solutions engineer for AOPEN America. Today we're talking about a super hot topic. Are my smart devices spying on me? Uh, the short answer is yes, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a huge topic, um, you know, now that uh, smart speakers have been uh, popularized. And of course, it's going to be more and more, uh, uh, it's going to be a bigger and bigger topic the more smart devices you have, right? Your TV, you know, has, it's monitoring you. Your stove is going to be monitoring you. And it's just going to be, there's going to be more and more com uh, conversations and legislations around, uh, legislation around that. So the main thing I wanted to cover first or just talk about is that I mostly want to talk about uh, data security in the aspect of data characterization instead of the data itself. I don't really want to get around into the mass amount of privacy, security, and political stuff, more about the way that it's used in uh, commercial and how it possibly can be used in consumer devices as well, right? Uh, and the second thing is that I wanted to talk about, we've been talking a lot about uh, IoT devices, specifically SOCs, but if we start to adopt mass amounts of SOCs into our house, how do we manage those once we have 100 light switches? Does each light switch use a SIM card, register with a network? How do we push updates to our light switches if there's a security flaw? And, you know, light switches are one thing, but what happens when you have, you know, five or six, uh, you know, Wi-Fi cameras in your house, right? Um, so uh, I want to talk briefly about that issue and, and what companies are doing. So to start things off is, of course, uh, there's existing uh, recording laws uh, for video and voice. You know, if myself or even Google wanted to record you in your home, uh, lots of things would have to be signed. The, the, the monitoring aspect is in concern about devices that you're opting into, right? Your cell phone and your smart speaker, right? That's, that's what, what we're really calling into question because you want those things to listen to you in some cases, uh, but not every case. So, but... Generally speaking, they have to be listening to you and characterization to perform their function. It's all that additional data that uh, people are concerned about. And specifically, it's smart speakers sort of sparked all this conversation because uh, they're obviously more uh, 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 suspicious, right? Is that your smartphone, you know, uh, people don't think about it that can record you from more than 10 feet away. However, a smart speaker is designed to... Uh, uh, be able to hear you from multiple distances and so that's that's really the concern is that it's listening to you uh, when you're very smart far away maybe in a different room or things like that so that's what really brought up a lot of suspicion so of course uh, when you talk about people who offer solutions commercial solutions in this space uh, you know it's very frustrating to them because uh, the worst offenders here are, of course your browser and your phone right uh, the two largest tech two of the largest tech companies in the United States are free and the, their, their product to their clients is your data, right? And so, yes, you're being monitored 100% because otherwise uh, Google and Facebook wouldn't make any money, right? So, but the question is, is really about what's being uh, recorded, when it's being recorded, how it's being processed, and what's being sold uh, specifically. But uh, to go back to a lot of the enterprise clients in this space, uh, yeah, they're frustrating because when they're trying to process and grab characterization data, um, since it's a new type of technology, uh, they run into a lot of walls where there doesn't seem to be a lot of walls currently around cell phones and browsers and things like that. So let's talk about the way that you um, dealt with this type of um, uh, data specifically for facial recognition. So if you want to use facial recognition uh, in a in a uh, a uh, retail environment, let's say, maybe a bank or a store, you want to see who, who's shopping, who's been in there before, what they're looking at, how long they're looking at, uh, what logos, uh, what they're wearing, uh, what they're, you know, or do they have an accent, are they from out of town, you want to you want to grab all this data from them in a retail environment. You can grab characterization data, but you can, you cannot upload it, uh, the actual video or audio data to the cloud, right? Um, and so, so it's really about this characterization data is what I wanted to talk about today. So it's not the video itself, it's characterizing uh, the information in the video. So the way that characterization data is formed is through a new technique, relatively new technique, called the neural network. So how a neural network works is that you expose um, a software program to a type of input. Let's just say that it's a picture, right? You're taking pictures on your cell phone. And so what Facebook will do is they'll take a whole bunch of pictures with Coca-Cola logos and uh, they'll feed it into the software and it's called learning. And then uh, eventually uh, that hidden layer will, will be able to start to recognize that logo pattern. And that way when I come in with a new, a new photo and I say, hey, does this 
picture have a Coca-Cola logo in it, it'll be able to tell me if it does or not, right? So this is obviously massively valuable to all the data that's being collected on your cell phone. Um, uh, and any pictures you take or upload to Facebook or things like that, because you can you can see who's in the shot, what brands they're wearing, what 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 they're uh, what they're saying, uh, the accent, uh, what's in the background, right? Uh, all this sort of stuff is extremely valuable data, and then you can gather that information and pull it out of all the raw data, which is the video and the voice, without actually you know having to store that information forever. Right, so the, the the primary information that you're selling and you're storing is sort of just that output layer. You ran an ad campaign to these people, um, and uh, how effective was it in, in changing their buying or purchasing? How many people saw it, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, there's a primary difference between uh, this data, uh, this characterization data, and uh, the actual raw data itself. And that's sort of uh, the difference in terms of how you can get around uh, uh, you know act, the way that raw data is handled in these type of situations. So when we talk about characterization data, you can use uh, very simple processing to sort of um, pull out, you know, information about what someone says to a smart speaker. Right? You don't have to s save the recording; it just needs to save what you said. That's important, right? So, do you want Mexican or pizza tonight? It stores food, Mexican, and p uh, uh, and pizza. Right? You don't need to actually store the recording. Same thing with characterization data. Uh, you know, if it's listening to you, the main reason why smart speakers store information about you is to try and improve uh, their reaction to your voice. So, however, is that character, you know, how secure is that characterization data? It, your, your voice fingerprint, uh, it can characterize you by your accent and uh, the type of uh, language that you use and uh, your emotional state and things like that. So, currently, there's not a ton of controls around that type of data because most of the focus is on who has access in, uh, to an, an actual voice recording or an actual uh, video recording. So these type of inference models that get that characterization out uh, can be uh, very, uh, they run on computers and they take a lot of processing power to run in a lot of, a lot of cases, which is why companies like Intel are pushing heavier edge devices, right? Uh, is because uh, a lot of people in the space, in the con commercial space, uh, you know, they have uh, programs that require, you know, an i5 to run, right? So if you want to take in a few video feeds, uh, figure out who's in them, uh, you know, what they're saying, what they're wearing, stuff like that, you need a 1080p, uh, maybe a few 1080p cameras, and maybe an i5, uh, and things like that. So that's why a lot of these companies in this sort of space in, in retail and enterprise uh, are pushing for it because um, you know they want to have these higher e uh, higher end processi processors um, at the edge and that solves the whole problem of um, the privacy aspect that I brought up when talking about EU is that if you do all these processing at the edge then and only uploading the characterization data that's how you avoid that whole thing with you know, is my video and voice data being stored in a cloud server somewhere that someone can have access to um, at some point of time, right? It's how long you hang on to that data and things like that. So uh, the second thing I want to talk about is, of course, you know, as smart devices become more and more popular, how are we going to manage? Because there, most smart devices just connect to your Wi-Fi, which seems massively unsecure, right? So. Um, and it's a very different, uh, difficult problem to solve because currently it's very expensive, right? So the way that hardware is typically managed these days um, and accounts and security on a personal level is you probably use a website which is asked uh, for your cell phone to send a code, right? And th the reason why that works is because the most uh, robust security is something you know and something you have, right? And so uh, people are notoriously poor at creating passwords, but if you have a device uh, and uh, uh, and uh, that password that you know, those two things are actually extremely strong. In the old days, they used to, uh, for a hardware security layer, people didn't have cell phones, so you had like a little fob that had a server-synced uh, number generator on it. So once again, it was something you had, and then the password you knew, and then the server would verify you. So that type of security is extremely robust. So the extra layer of that is... Uh, is what happens, you know, with your cell phone if I try and represent that I have your ha uh, cell phone hardware and, uh, and I want to try and intercept that code, right? And the technology behind that um, is really around these two things that people have been talking about, which is TPM 2.0 and UEFI. So what, what, the, what those systems actually do is that if I try and pretend that I'm your hardware, 
uh, in the past, uh, that was, it's, uh, it, it's been possible, basically. Uh, you could um, start any virtual machine, set any hardware pro profile you want, and so there was no way for a server to actually know if the hardware configuration uh, was coming from an individual machine, right? But now, um, with this new type of technology, with the, the, the secure boot, uh, and, and the TPM chips, uh, you can actually verify the hardware at a level. So if you know someone steals your cell phone, or for instance your laptop now, um, and they try and uh, log into a, a, the laptop, it will not allow them to log in or hard reset the device. You can't do anything to it until it can verify that it's uh, connected to uh, the, proper, uh, the proper account. So once again, it creates an extra layer of security, physical security for the devices themselves. And that's really where we're at in the enterprise world currently, is that uh, when these systems in the enterprise world, they all have to run on pretty much normal devices, right? False systems, right? Windows, Linux, Android, uh, and they, it, because those systems, those full systems, have very robust management, right? So when you have hundreds of devices, you know, uh, sorry, thousands of devices, thousands of users, you have to have these uh, software programs that allow you to manage and protect and update all those systems. And the issue when trying to bring that uh, to more of like a smart speaker, smart light switch, is that you know you're going to have to run on the SOC. So. So uh, just a scenario, let's say you put in you know, uh, uh, 20 smart light switches in your house and they require software updates or maybe, you know, how, do you, how do you manage that? They're not running Windows. Um, so there's going to have to be systems and management and gateway management systems that sort of are more secure and are more intelligent with managing um, mass amounts of device, which is currently expensive uh, even for enterprise. So that's the big problem that um, companies need to solve is that, you know, currently people maybe have a few smart speakers, smart TV, smart car, uh, smartphone, you know, smart dog collar, smart tag, right? Um, you know, but that, that's going to keep growing and growing and growing. But if someone, you know, you have to change your Wi-Fi password, do you need to reconfig? If you never used one of these devices, by the way... Um, uh, how your registration works is that you go up to the light switch, you connect to it usually locally via Bluetooth, and then you s set which Wi-Fi password it needs to join, and then you're good to go, right? Uh, however, in enterprise scenarios, they've always been a completely isolated and hardwired, and, and, but that's sort of the technology that's changing is that now these sort of smart device networks are all becoming Wi-Fi uh, uh, based and non-isolated, and that's why there's so many security concerns right now. So normally, um, these devices are controlled and managed through an IoT gateway, uh, which in enterprise would typically all isolated and hardwired. But now that everything needs to be Wi-Fi and you're not going to rewire your house for a whole bunch of smart devices. And so the issue here is, once again, uh, security and management, right? So you have the Google uh, um, Cloud Gateway, which uh, saves all your accounts and your devices to the cloud and all your data goes to the cloud. So once again, you have a lot of the issues with... Uh, cloud security and at, who has access to your data there. Uh, and of course, the one that raised a lot of eyebrows a few months ago was the Amazon Sidewalk, which uh, uses a proprietary network to send between Amazon devices. So if you have like a ring camera and you, you know, you have your cell phone, you can uh, log into it to see who is at your front door. But if the ring camera can't access your Wi-Fi, uh, then it'll actually go through your neighbor's Wi-Fi. And the idea of your video stream going through a neighbor's house uh, is very, very suspect to obviously a lot of people. So, um, but these are the types of solutions that are trying to be developed in terms of uh, creating uh, devices that you always have access to but are still safe at the same time. So it's just a massive issue that's you know, expensive on the commercial and enterprise side, but they're trying to develop systems for consumers as well. So wrap things up today. Of course, you're getting spied on. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but you know, a lot of it's characterization data in terms of neural networks pulling out uh, data from raw text and video uh, to try and verify who you are, information about you, things like that. Uh, and to do that uh, is very heavy if you want to do it in a safe way, like that EU legislation. You got to do all that characterization at the edge. However, of course, Facebook would rather you keep using a tiny device and then you send them all your data and that way they have the raw data and the characterization data at the same time. 
And of course, the, the second problem is, uh, as we move towards more and more smart devices is file systems have real robust management systems associated with them that are used uh, to, to basically do everything you can think of. However, smart uh, home technology is way behind uh, in terms of offering similar type of security um, and modern management tech techniques. So that's something that a lot of companies are going to need to solve in the future. So hope you found this enlightening. Um, thanks again for joining.